Okay. On both channels, Set Apart to Serve and the Nazarite Lifestyle, every year I teach about the holy days, about God's holy days. I'm led to teach because obviously people are not really looking to, you know, the channels for the videos or the people are just not getting it. Someone made a comment, which ended up getting deleted because he deleted my comment. So I just went on, just deleted everything. You're not going to delete my response on your ignorance. And I'm trying to teach you something and you delete it because you don't want to hear it. So I just delete everything. You know, we this, this, this both my channels are not going to tolerate foolishness. I'm not going to have a flock of foolery throughout the comments of... Uh, by those who don't want to learn. You, you, you are entitled. I, I'm, I'm freely leaving my comments open for people to es, es, uh, express their feelings about things in a respectful way. And I know that it's a lot of spiritual ignorance out there. I know that that's where I'm led to teach. But if you leave a folly comment and it's wrong for me to correct your folly comment... And all you do is delete it so your foolishness can stay up. I would not support your comment. Not on my channel. No. that See, that's selfishness. Now, that's selfish. If you are here and you're leaving a comment, that's cool. But if your comment is a folly, if it's of spiritual ignorant meaning lacking of knowledge, of the truth that I'm teaching, I'm going to correct you and I'm going to teach. Now, if you don't want to be taught the truth and you delete my teachings that I'm led to correct you on, then your whole comment will be deleted. How dare you? Not only that, but I will block you from now on. Both my channels will not tolerate ignorance. We're not doing that today, people. I'm here to teach. Moving on. Someone made a comment about that they don't have that we don't have to feast. We don't have to take part with the feasts, the festivals that's located in Leviticus 23. I made a statement. I should I should have wrote it down. I made a statement about that. I should have wrote it down. Forgive me, you all. I think it's in Corinthians. I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. But someone was saying that if we eat meat and the, person, the next person don't eat meat, we shouldn't make them eat meat. And I'm like, what, the, what did that have to do with the video? And he responded saying that, no, that was about the festivals. We don't have to obey the festivals if we don't want to. People. If you are listening to people who are teaching you that you don't have to uh, remember the festivals, they are liars. You have to understand something. I should have wrote it down before I, 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 I made this video. But I know where he was coming from, but that was not about none of that. that what, the scripture that he was trying to correct me with, once again, trying to correct truth. You cannot use truth to correct truth. But... People have to understand the scripture that he was using is for those who remember the Sabbath. Some people eat on the Sabbath. Some people fast during the Sabbath. So we're going to leave that where it's at because I don't want to leave off and go off into that explanation. And he tried to use that as meaning that that's also for the festivals. We don't have to obey the festivals. That's not it. People, the seven festivals that's located in Leviticus 23 is the purpose of mankind. It's the purpose of mankind from the Passover all the way over to the last great day, which is also known as the eighth day. The eighth day is uh, reminding people of the great white throne judgment. How you don't have to remember that? The great white throne judgment ha hasn't even happened yet. 
when we remember these festivals, we're, we're, we are remembering the past, hallelujah, the present, and the future. How dare we teach people that they don't have to obey or remember the seven feasts? That's a lie from the pits of hell. Now, here's the thing. The reason why people don't understand that they have to remember, is, remember that is because the festivals are for the called out ones. Huh? The chosen ones, the true church, not these YouTubers, not social media called out ones or chosen ones, not, not self-righteous people. No, the true church of God, those who are set apart on this earth representing the kingdom and here as aliens teaching the gospel, the true gospel that's struggling with sin. We have been revealed. We're the only ones who have been revealed the mysteries of God's word. We are the only ones who have been revealed the mystery. So we're the only ones who know of and, and understand the festivals. Others don't understand that. They don't understand the festival. So when they go and bad pass it, they think they understand when they read it, but they don't. So they say, well, you know, we ain't got a bad. I ain't got a, I don't understand it. So I ain't got to attend to that. And that's how I used to be before God revealed it to me. We went before God revealed the festivals to me with all understanding. I am one of the ones who lacked wisdom of that scripture or the verses in Leviticus 23. I used to always back past it because I didn't understand it. I felt that it wasn't even for me. But when you get understanding of it, God has blessed you with his Holy Spirit. He has blessed you with his, his wisdom to know the festivals. Once God blessed us with the knowledge of the mysteries, the secrets that's kept, the secrets, Matthew 13 and 11. Matthew 13 and 11, and also Luke 18. These are mysteries. It's, it's mysteries, and it's only revealed to those who he want to reveal it to. Once it's revealed to us, with all understanding, we are, we are abiding by that because we have knowledge of it. We understand why we have to abide by it. You cannot abide by a commandment if you don't understand it. But once you get the glory and the taste of the mystery, huh? you then have understanding on why you need to obey God's commandments. People, the seven festivals that's located in chapter 23 and throughout the Bible is all eternal. It's representing the past, which is the Passover from the beginning when Yeshua died on the cross, all the way up between the point of the, uh, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we have the Pentecost. So the Pentecost is, is right now all the way to the atonement. Huh? The, uh, the day of atonement between the, uh, Pentecost, which is the first fruits, you have the Pentecost, which is the first fruits, and then between that to the Day of Atonement, right here in this space, this space right here, <laughs> or the Holy Days, represents right now. Represents right now. Huh? Represents what's happening right now. And then when the Day of Atonement comes, it's representing us, the first fruits, finally putting Satan away. That's what the Day of Atonement represents. That hasn't happened yet, people. So how has that done away with, or has you get to obey, but I don't want to if I don't, I don't have to. I ain't got to obey that. What are you talking about? That's part of God's purpose for mankind. That's God's ultimate purpose, the seven festivals. <laughs> and after the Day of Atonement, you have the uh, the tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles represents the first, uh, uh, yeah, the first fruits in heaven celebrating, putting Satan away, which was the Day of Atonement. And then the festival after the, uh, uh, the tabernacles, then you have the last great day, which represents what? The great white throne judgment. 
Meaning that the vast majority who are not called right now will be called during the great white throne. You can't do nothing but shout. Huh? The majority that's not saved right now will be saved during the second resurrection. That's what represents that completion of the holy days. It's the eighth day because right after the seven days of the Feast of, of Tabernacles, it's that extra day, which is the eighth day, but it's still the seventh holy day. It's still the seventh holy day, but it's the eighth day because it's clicked on with the, the tabernacles, which is seven days. Uh, you, I don't want to lose y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you for your wisdom. People, the feast that's located in the Holy Bible is not done away with. And it's not Peter could obey, but Paul don't have to. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And let me say something. For those who keep saying that they don't have to abide by it or it's not for me and others is listening, you need to know that that person is not called. They lack understanding on these festivals. It's no way that once God enlightened you on that scripture that's located in Leviticus chapter 23, the whole chapter, it's no way once you get revealed in the taste of the glory of what that means for all mankind, that you would have the audacity to say, that ain't for me. Not at all. Once you get the understanding, you would be like, yes, that's for me. That's for all the saints. And it would be for all mankind at the end. When God complete his purpose for all mankind, and that's what represents the great day, the great eighth day, the last day. I'm telling y'all, I'm excited right now just talking about it. So, no, it's not done away with. It's not done away with, people. God's holy days is for all eternally. And what's happening right now in scriptures, it just represents the purpose of God's plan. Remember, from the Passover all the way to the last great day is the completion of God's purpose for mankind. Amen.